Hi, this is Charlotte with Living Inside Out Ministry. We started a new series, Born Again. What does that mean? I shared with you that I recently had an experience with a young man. He came running out of his place, his house, and he saw our little dog. And again, God will use anything, anything in your life. Maybe you like hot cars. Well, he'll send somebody your way who also likes hot cars, and there'll be a connection. An open door for you to tell that person about Jesus Christ if they don't know him. Or an opportunity for you to have fellowship. So he came running out and he wanted to know, what kind of dog is that? Well, I knew that it wasn't about the dog. I knew in my heart it wasn't. It was a connection. It was an outreach. The Holy Spirit reaching out to this young man. So we prayed with him and we taught, visited with him a little bit. And I asked him, are you born again? And he hesitated for a moment. And he said, uh, hmm, uh, what does that mean? So I explained to him what that meant. We looked at John 3.3, 3, actually 1 through 13, how Nicodemus came at night. Now, he was a ruler of the Jews. He was a Pharisee. So he'd been involved in what we might call churchy things. He'd been involved, but Jesus marveled at him. Jesus was a little, not surprised, but brought it to his attention He's, you're a teacher of the Jews, Israel, and you don't know this basic truth, basic truth. Friends, we ought to keep the gospel of Jesus Christ simple, simple. Don't let religion come in and complicate simple truth. Don't do that. Jesus said, you must be born again. Jesus said this. Not Charlotte, Jesus. And he told this to Nicodemus. Nicodemus said, how can a man, an old man, go back into his mother's womb? You see, Nicodemus was focused on the flesh, on the natural. He didn't understand the spiritual truth behind what Jesus Christ was saying to him. He didn't understand that. So Jesus went on further to explain to him, what you see here is the flesh, and it's born of flesh. My mother gave birth to me. Your mother gave birth to you. But he said, but the son of man who came down from heaven, you must be born again of him. You must be born again. So we talked about that. We talked about how you can get trapped into going to church. You could be volunteering. Be there every single time the doors are open and not be born again. That's what Jesus ran into with Nicodemus. And Nicodemus was, boom, right in his face was the truth. Here I am, a ruler of the Jews, teacher of Israel, a Pharisee. And I don't know what this man that I've heard about does all kinds of signs and wonders. And I've already called him rabbi, teacher, and said no one can do all these signs and wonders except by God. What is he talking about? And Jesus was so kind, so patient. Friends, see to it that you're kind and patient when people who have been religionized to the point where they don't even know basic truths as to whether or not they'd go to heaven if they died tonight. That is the most important thing. And the second most important thing is to teach them the word of God in a simple, childlike manner. Born again. What does that mean? Part two. Let's go to... I want to make sure I get my notes right. 2 Corinthians 5.17. This is in God's Word translation. I'll read this to you, and then I want to tell you a little bit about my testimony. 
2 Corinthians 5.17, God's Word Translation. Whoever is a believer in Christ is a new creation. Remember when Jesus was talking to Nicodemus? Things that are born of the flesh are flesh. Things that are born of the Spirit are spirit. The old way of living has disappeared. A new way of living has come into existence. Just like the wind, we see the result of the wind. Well, we also see the result, and you see the result, of change in your own life. You see the change out here. You're not so necessarily aware of the new birth that took place inside of you, but maybe people have said, wow, she's really changed. Let me tell you something, a little bit about my testimony. I got born again and spirit-filled in Saudi Arabia. And I read just a small book, one of those little mini books by Brother Kenneth Hagin, who's since gone to be with the Lord. And it was about a new creation. And here's how he explained it. He explained it like a baby who was just born and the mother and the baby are still in the hospital. So all kinds of people come to the hospital to see the new baby, congratulate the parents. Now, what if we had a group of people who were coming to celebrate the birth of this new baby? That's what heaven does when one person gets born again. Make a big deal out of it when somebody does. Make a big deal out of it. What if somebody in the group, in the circle, who came to see the new baby, how the parents doing, what's the baby's name? And somebody popped up and said something like this. Oh, but what about his past? Now, wouldn't everybody else in the crowd look at that person like they were nuts? Of course they would. Somebody would say, what passed? He was just born at 12.02 a.m. What passed? Do you know that's what happens to you, to me, when we get born again? And as we continue to allow the Word of God, that seed, incorruptible seed inside of us, start to bring forth fruit, then other people start to see the change. Well, I got born again after I read that little book by Brother Kenneth Hagen, And I knelt down at the side of our bathtub in Saudi Arabia, Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. And I said, I went to God and I was very uh, matter of fact. I, that's how I am. And I said, well now God, I understand that if I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ came in the flesh, died on the cross for me, for me. And that if I was the only person here, he still would have done that for me because that's how valuable you see I am. And I believe that you raised him from the dead and that now he's seated at your right hand. If I receive that as truth and I say, here, take my life, it's a mess. I want the life that you came to give me. A great exchange. That I'll be like that newborn baby. I won't have a past. And I said, so, I believe that. I believe you, and I believe that change will take place in me the minute I lay hold of it. I said, so I ask you, Come into my life. Well, I didn't necessarily feel anything. Friend, don't get caught up in feelings. Jesus said what's born of the flesh is flesh. Oftentimes when God moves in supernatural ways by the power of his Holy Spirit, you won't feel anything. Don't chase after feelings. Chase after the word of God. Base everything you believe on the Word of God and keep Scripture in context. We read this entire Scripture in context. John 3.16 happens to be within the context of 
Nicodemus seeking out Jesus, calling him teacher, and acknowledging that signs and wonders happen and they could only be wrought through God. And therefore, this teacher of the Jewish people, a Pharisee, Nicodemus, well, he wasn't seeing any of that in the synagogue where he was going and what he was doing and any of his colleagues. None of that was happening. So Jesus really stood out, got his attention. You might be getting some people's attention. Don't run away from that. Just stay strong. But keep scripture in the context of where it is in the Bible because it helps us to understand the whole picture. So I got born again, right there, on my knees, in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, at the edge of a bathtub. Well, for about two weeks, my husband, when he would come home from work, and I would be out in the compound, as I usually was, talking, visiting, going about my day, and I said to him, you know, everybody's so nice. I wonder what's going on. For about two weeks, I kept saying this. Finally, he wasn't born again yet. So like Nicodemus, what I was saying and what was going on made no sense, sense, you know, your senses to him. And in an exasperated tone of voice, he said to me, it's not them, it's you. And I stopped for a moment and I thought, yeah, that's right. That's right. Something happened inside of me. I was born again, and I took on the nature of my heavenly father, but you don't see that seed growing and producing fruit yourself all the time. Just like if you go out to a field and you plant soybeans, you don't dig up the seed and check it every day, you know the important part of the growth of that seed and bringing forth the fruit is to leave that seed in the ground and don't dig it up. So oftentimes we don't see anything that goes on in our own life as far as transformation, but when that seed in the ground starts sprouting, poking up through the dirt, then we say, ah, yeah, I see that, mm-hmm. So Nicodemus did not understand how an old man could go back into his mother's womb. Well, when we had a discussion with this young man that we were speaking with, he didn't know if he was born again. So I explained to him what that meant according to the scriptures. And he understood. He said, yes, I've done that. I've done that. So whoever... Do you know that person that you're angry with right now? Maybe you're holding a grudge against them. Do you know Jesus Christ died for them? Oh, unforgiveness is a prison that you enter into. The old way of living has disappeared. Now, that doesn't happen overnight. I still drank alcohol after I got born again. I didn't know. My mind wasn't renewed. Instantly, your mind isn't renewed. The only thing that has the power to renew your mind and begin to transform your thoughts to think like Jesus Christ, Almighty God, is this thing right here, the Bible. Nothing else has the power within it to renew your mind to think like God. Nothing, nothing. You can read all kinds of books. You can read about Jesus. You can go to church and hear about Jesus. But do you know him? Are you born again from above? Are you born again from above? So whoever is a believer in Christ is a new creation. The old way of living has disappeared. When you focus on Jesus Christ... A lot of times, the old way of living just begins to fall off of you. Those things that were appealing at one time in your life are no longer appealing. And you don't have to, oh, I'm going to try not to do this. You just lose the desire for those old ways 
as you grow and hunger for your desire of the Word of God. You know that song, just a chorus. As the deer panteth for the water, so my soul long after you. Well, does your soul long after the Word of God like the deer pants for the water? Do you know, are you aware that you cannot live another moment without Jesus Christ being alive and active in your own life? It's very true. And the more aware of that you become, the desire for the old ways just fall off. They just fall off. Let's read something else here. Oh, here, we want to read in, in Acts. I'm sorry. In Acts, we're going to read about a particular person who got born again. Now, somebody who had quite a past. Maybe you do. But you don't have to allow your past to determine your future. Acts chapter 7. Verse 54 through 60 in the New International Version. Now remember, Jesus was talking to a Pharisee, somebody who was in a religious setting all the time. When the members of the Sanhedrin heard this, they were furious. Now this is concerning Timothy, or Stephen, I'm sorry, Stephen. And this was concerning Stephen, who was evangelizing. And he was telling them the truth about being born again. And gnashed their teeth at him. Oh, they were mad. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God. And Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. They were yelling. These are the religious people, the Pharisees, Sadducees. They covered their ears and they yelled at the top of their voices. This really made them mad. They all rushed him. They all rushed at him, dragged him out of the city, and began to stone him, Stephen, because he was telling them these people who had spent their whole life in this religious setting, but he was telling them the truth about who Jesus Christ was and is today and will always be, began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witness laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul, somebody who was witnessing the stoning of Stephen, who was telling the Pharisees about being born again, the truth the way, the way, and the word way in these scriptures is capitalized because there's only one way to God, to heaven, and that way is Jesus Christ. So this witness laid Stephen's coat at the feet of Saul. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep. Do you know to be absent from the body for a Christian is to be present with the Lord? I see that Stephen didn't say these bunch of, I tell you what, look at what they're doing now. They're stoning me. Ugh, man, that one hurt. Remember earlier when I said 
That person that you're holding a grudge against, Jesus died for them. Unforgiveness is a prison that we choose to enter into. Stephen could have entered into the prison of unforgiveness and he would have felt every stone. But he chose to pray for these people who were stoning him. But let's focus on Saul. Saul. They laid the coat of Stephen at Saul's feet. Somebody who was witnessing this stoning of Stephen, who was an evangelist. This is in the book of Acts. Now let's go to Saul's conversion. In the New International uh, Version. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. You see, he had a little bit different attitude, didn't he, than Nicodemus. Nicodemus sought out Jesus and said, Teacher, who really are you? I've heard about all the signs, the wonders, and only somebody from God is capable of doing these things. So who really are you? Saul had a little bit different approach. Let people be themselves and let people ask the questions they need to ask. Don't cut them off short. God didn't do this with Saul. And here he was, a participant in the stoning of Stephen, who was an evangelist. And he was evangelizing, and these Pharisees overheard him and, oh, made him mad, made him mad. Religious people get mad at the truth. Just, they do. And you just need to keep speaking out the truth of God's word. Keep speaking it out. And Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. You see, they had dispersed by now. He went to the high priest. See, he's going to go to somebody that he is accustomed to going to. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus. Saul's got a plan. So that if he found any there in Damascus, in Damascus who belonged to the way, capital W, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. So he's asking this high priest, I would like to have a letter giving me the authority to do this. Men, women, doesn't matter. If I find any in Damascus, I want to be able to imprison them. Do you know we're not called to force people to accept Jesus Christ? Now, this right here sounds like ISIS to me. Wouldn't you say? They believe a lie. By the way, Allah is not God. There's only one God. Jesus Christ is the Son of God and God. Like it or not, that's the truth. As he neared Damascus on his journey. See, he's on his way. He's got his letter. It's all right for him. He's got the approval of man. And it's all right for him if I find any in this way, the way, that I can imprison them. I can arrest them, imprison them. So he's on his way. And suddenly, a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Now notice this voice didn't say, why do you persecute my people? Why did you persecute Stephen? Why do you persecute me? When Jesus Christ comes to live and dwell inside of you by his spirit, 
then you are, in the eyes of the enemy, no different than Jesus. He's just, the devil is just as afraid of you as he was and is of Jesus Christ. Now that's a whole mouthful right there. And on his way, Saul, on his way to go arrest these people, oh, I just hope I find some. I sure hope I find some. He's on a mission. And he hears a voice. And he sees a flash of light. God is light. And you're the light of the world. If you're a Christian, you shine everywhere you go. Be aware of that. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Now here's when Saul got born again. Remember when Nicodemus addressed Jesus as rabbi, teacher? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. Don't give up on people. Here's Saul going around murdering Christians. And yet, Jesus died for him. That person you're mad at, Jesus died for them. And Saul addresses him as Lord. That's when his conversion took place. Remember when I shared with you that when I got born again, it happened to me a particular way. But that doesn't mean it's going to happen to everybody that same way. When people, perhaps at a gas station, and you ask them, are you born again? And they know what that means, or they ask for further teaching on it. Give them exactly what the Bible says, what Jesus explained to Nicodemus, and let them bo get born again right there. Right here on a journey, this is when Saul accepted Jesus as Lord. He called him Lord. He addressed him as Lord. So it's not going to be the same way every single time. Don't make a religion out of the way the Lord does things. Know that each person is unique, just as Father God knows each one of us is unique. And allow people, as you go out into the world, allow them to be free to give their heart and life to Jesus Christ in a manner that they're comfortable doing. Like Nicodemus came at night asking the rabbi, asking Jesus, what's this all about? Who are you really? We're going to close for now. But remember, indeed, the kingdom of God is within you.